You know, I w wanted to roll the yard. You ever do that? You go out in the springtime and the yard's got all these humps and lumps and big bumps in it. And you look at it and go, wow, this really could be rolled and that would be much better. Well, I did it about three years ago. I went down to Home Depot and I rented a roller. Why didn't I just buy a roller? Rollers are huge and they take up a lot of space and I don't have much space. Dragging them down into the basement, you know how much a roller weighs? Well, actually it's one of those water-filled polyurethane drums, so it doesn't weigh very much when you take the water out because you take the water out and then you store it and it's still this big cylinder the size of a water softener. I mean, huge. No, literally. It's that size. It's the size of a water softener tank. I already have a water softener. I can't have two in the basement. And if I put it in the garage with the car, I can't get the car in. Don't have much space in there. Big car, little truck, a lot of tools. Not much space. Not getting rid of any of the tools just so that I can have an empty lawn roller sit around to use it once a year. Okay, enough about the lawn roller. Went down to rent a lawn roller this year. I rented it, came home, rolled the yard. Yay, job done. Then I got the bright idea, I better take it back today because I'll get a discount. Yeah, it's a 12 mile run to Home Depot and a 12 mile run back. So it's 24 miles round trip. Yeah, 24 miles round trip. That works out to about $75 in gas. No, no, wait a minute. That's because of the side trips to Harbor Freight. No, it works out to about a $3 trip. Yeah, my little truck gets 24 miles a gallon. Even with a big heavy, well, even with an empty lawn roller in it. So I thought, well, I'll take it back. So I took it back, they gave me a $4 discount. Normally it would have cost me 18 bucks to rent the thing, and they gave it to me for 14. So, I made up the money of the trip, yay! And ended up with a dollar left over extra. Now I've got a dollar refunded on my credit card. It's like finding it on the street. It doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while you get a refund and then you decide, hey man, I'm here, I might as well spend it. So I went down the aisles looking at all the stuff. It's Home Depot. They've got ladders. I already have a ladder, don't need a ladder. I could use a taller one. Something like uh, 40 foot, like the one I left at the other house because I didn't have room to store it. Maybe not a good idea. 40 foot ladder is a bit much. I could get another saw. Oh, come on, Dave. You don't need another saw. For heaven's sakes, look how many saws you need. These are the ones that you don't use. Those are the ones that you do use. Back in the storeroom, there's 20 that you haven't even decided if you're gonna not use them. They're just kind of there. So, I walk down the aisle and I think, hey, look, they have diamond files. They got diamond files. This little diamond sharpener, the world's best diamond surface for sharpening tools and knives. And this one says, this is a fine. It's a red one. That means it's fine. Right here. It's got a little thing that says fine. Don't know if you can see that real well. It says fine right there. Fine. For everyday sharpening, all purpose restoring of edges, grit size 25 micron, 600 mesh, color code red. Yep, that's this baby, 600 mesh. Now the diamond files that I got coming from China, which will be here eventually, they are 300 grit. So they're a lot coarser than this one. Now remember me talking about the wheel from Harbor Freight and how the coarse one chipped the uh, carbide? I thought, wow, they got a diamond file. I got an extra dollar I don't need. So I'm walking down the aisle and they got this diamond file. Cool. And I'm thinking, diamond files, buck fifty, right? Nah, it's sixteen dollars. But it's made in Marlboro, Massachusetts, USA. 
by Diamond Machining Technology. Uh, www.dmtssharp.com. I'll put a link down below. If you ever want to buy one of these, I don't know if it works yet. Yeah, it's still in the package. But I thought, what the heck? 16 bucks, it's only really going to cost me 15, right? It's a bargain. It's like when your wife comes home and says, guess how much money I saved today? And you know that it's always the percentage. If she gets 10% off of whatever she bought, she saved 100 bucks. Spent 900. Yeah. Okay, I think smaller on savings. This one's $15 in, out of my pocket. Well, actually off the credit card. And so the bill comes on the 30th and I pay it and it's like it never happened. So not a big deal, right? 15 bucks. So let's open up this diamond sharpener. Kind of a misleading title. It doesn't sharpen diamonds. It's got diamonds on it and you use it to sharpen other things. I haven't had my coffee yet. Bear with me, guys. Working on it. But this is the carbide blade that I cleaned up. Took all the rust off of it, cleaned it up, shined it up. Looks pretty good, except for the little spacer in here, this, this diamond spacer. Interesting. Uh, I didn't clean that up. Not going to really worry about it. It's just in there to keep the blade from rattling around on the saw. First thing we're going to do is start this other camera. There we go. And we put it on record. Because this is what they... We started another camera. This is a two camera shot. We're getting really high tech. I know, and I haven't even had all my, all my coffee yet. But this should let you see a little better what's going on. And I will zoom in as much with this one as try and get everything in. Uh, might take a few shots of it just to see if I can make it work, but be that as it may. But let's get on with the job. Take out my Walmart knife, open my Home Depot package. Whoever came up with the idea of bubble wrap, I'm sure somebody somewhere loves him. Everybody's got a mother. They do, don't they? Bubble wrap. Not so bad if you're done right. This one was actually done right. I could get it out of there. This is cool. This is a butterfly knife. Now, darn. I was going to do the flipping thing where I did the and show you how fancy this was but you know what they made it click it's got a little stop on it it's not exactly going to flip around easily butterfly knives have a little clasp down here at least the one that I had back when I was a kid got it taken away because you know it's dangerous but I suppose if I went into an airport with this someone would probably take it because it looks just like a butterfly knife I could sharpen somebody's toenails with this thing and make them into deadly weapons. Ah, silliness. Anyways, I thought it was cool because it opened up like a butterfly knife. And I was going to do the flippy thing, but you know, you don't get everything. Okay, some of you guys may remember this little fixture that I made up. I guess it's really a jig that I made up for sharpening blades.
Well, it works pretty darn good. If I set it this way, I can sharpen this blade. If I set it in this direction, I can sharpen these teeth over here. If I set it like this, I can sharpen these teeth over here. Makes no difference other than this is the side the camera's on. So we're going to go with this side. Go to my handy dandy water supply, which is always helpful, having water in your shop. Okay, reading the directions, it says, no oil needed, use water or use dry. Place edge at optimal sharpening angles, stroke edge forward, flip and repeat. Flip and repeat, flip and re oh, you're flipping the knife blade. They're talking about going this way and then flip it and go this way. Darn, I thought this butterfly knife thing was gonna work. Anyways, one of the things I like about this little jig is it lets me sit down to do th the job. Small thing, but it is kind of nice. Now, some of you may remember, this is what it looked like after it, it cut a two by four. Well, it's, I think it's actually a three and a half by three and a half. But anyways, it burned, it didn't cut at all. So this is our example of what happens when the saw is not sharp. Now, when I'm sharpening teeth on a saw, especially a circular saw like this one, with these big gullets, I'm not gonna sharpen the face of the tooth. Why am I not gonna sharpen the face of the tooth? Well, because you have to take off a lot of material to get anything done. The edge that does the cutting is right out here at the end. This back in here is just along for the ride. And it also is there to let you sharpen this blade down a little bit. Until that piece of carbide gets so small that it's no longer able to hold up under the stress of cutting, you can file that thing down to almost nothing. So, I want to sharpen the top edge. Now this blade is set up with alternating bevel teeth, kind of like a crosscut saw. One tooth points that way, the other tooth points this way. Not because it's bent, but because they ground the top of the tooth. This tooth is higher on this side. This tooth is higher on this side. So I'm going to take this little diamond file and sharpen it like that. Now, I didn't have the angle right on that one. There, that got it. Now why did I go two on the steel file and four on the, on the carbide? Because carbide is hard. Alternating bevel teeth, got to skip a tooth. Now I have one piece of carbide snapped off of this blade. Yep, one right there. Just one tooth missing, not a big deal. I suppose I could rig up something that would make this always follow the same exact angle and same path. But this is a thing for cutting wood. This is also a construction level blade. You know, it's just 
kind of a blade for cutting rough stuff. And the cool thing about it is I'm done filing one side of it already. Remember how long it took me to do the 140 tooth blade? Yeah, a lot longer. So I flip this around and now I have the other teeth lined up so that I'm doing about the same angle but from a different direction because they're pointed the other way. I don't know that this is necessarily an easier direction. It is a different direction. Now, I think a lot of this stuff is muscle memory. I don't just think it, I know it. A lot of this stuff is muscle memory. So as I go along, I hit the angles easier. Okay, looks like I got all the teeth. That was easy. Look at that. That was almost, yeah, that was nothing. Worked a lot harder for a lot less. Now, if I don't drop this on the floor, that would be kind of bad. There. Done, done. Look at that. One sharpened blade. Schmutz. Okay, Schmutz has wiped off the blade. Diamond is all done. We're ready to try this blade to see how well it cuts. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. If you're a new viewer, thank you very much for stopping by. And we're here every day, Monday through Friday at noon, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. Since you're already here, why not take a second and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to touch the like too. That always tells me which ones you like best. Hopefully this one's a favorite. Thanks for watching.